Hello everyone. Today I'd like to introduce to you a kind of nanofabrication method called focused electron beam induced deposition. First, let's look at the equipment setup. The equipment setup for focused electron beam induced deposition is actually similar to the setup of SEM. It's composed of three parts: the vacuum system, the electron generation system, which consists of the electron beam source, lenses and aperture, and the precursor injection tube. The injection tube is used to deliver the precursor gas from the reservoir to the substrate surface. And we can see from the lower right image the exact process of how electron assists the deposition reactions. The next part is actually the focus of my presentation. It's about the deposition rate and the key parameters controlling the rate. So here is a general expression for the deposition rate. It has two terms. The first one corresponds to the second order dissociative reaction. We can see from the expression that it's actually proportional to both the electron density and the adsorbate surface coverage. So here are three key parameters. One is the chemical reaction yield, which is actually the number of dissociated reactant molecules per incident electron. The second one is radio electron flux distribution. And the third is the adsorbate surface coverage. The second term is the sputtering term. It's not related to the sorbate surface coverage as the first term, but it's still proportional to the electron density. The Y here represents the sputtering yield, and the sign before this term is always minus, which shows sputtering always decreases deposition rate. So now I will focus on each of these parameters. The first one is electron flux distribution. The primary electrons follow the Ga Gaussian distribution. And from this general expression, we can see that the distribution is also related to the incident electron beam energy, which is represented by the current IP here. But also, we need to take into consideration the secondary electrons and backscatter electrons. The lower left image shows how these electrons are generated. They are actually generated along the primary beam injection path. But what really count is the number of electrons that can escape from the bulk to the substrate surface. And in the right image, we can see the distribution of both electrons. The red curve the red curves corresponds to secondary electrons, while the blue curves correspond to the backscatter ones. When the position is close to the primary beam center, the intensity of secondary electrons exceeds that of the backscatter ones. But when it's further away, the backscatter electrons dominate. This also shows that secondary electrons normally have a smaller energy, which gives a narrower distribution. The second parameter is the yield, which is related to the electron molecule interactions. Actually, there are all kinds of interactions between electrons and molecules, but here we'll just focus on two types of them. The first three applies for both the gas phase reaction and the surface absorbance reaction with electrons, and they are contributes to the thin film deposition. The dissociative electron attachment, dissociative ionization, and dissociation into neutrals actually share a pretty similar nature because they both involve excitation of the reactant molecule to a higher energy state and followed by a decomposition into the final products or radicals. 
The only difference is that the final products of these reactions are different. Some are cations, anions, or neutrals. Another type of reactions are unique to the surface. So one of them is electron stimulated desorption. It's actually also similar to the dissociative reactions shown above, but the end products are volatile, so they just escape from the surface without contributing to the fume deposition. The second type is the physical sputtering, and we can see that the maximum energy transferred from electron to the molecule is actually proportional to the initial electron beam energy E0. So when the transferred energy exceeds a critical value, which is normally the binding energy of the surface to the atoms, then the surface atom can be sputtered off. So this also shows the incident electron beam energy has a critical value if you want to sputter off the surface atoms. The final par parameter I would discuss is the surface coverage of adsorbates. Actually, the surface coverage is both spatial and time dependent. And here I include four of the primary processes that can happen on the surface, uh, which causes the surface coverage to change. The first one is a non-dissociative molecule adsorption. It's also a kind of physisorption due to the weak Van der Waals interaction. By setting all three other terms to zero and solving only this left equation, we can come to the surface coverage theta, which is related to the flux of precursor gas. And we also have the expression for the precursor gas flux at the tube exit. It's a product of both the effusion flux and the geometric factor. D is the diameter of the injection tube and L is the length. The second term here is the spontaneous thermal desorption. It's different from the electron stimulated desorption because it's thermally activated. The third term is also a thermally activated process, it's a surface diffusion. And uh, normally there is a relationship between the diffusion and desorption activation energy, so normally proportional. But in this case, it's a bit complicated because for physics option, the atoms on the surface are not confined by the underlying substrate lattice. So this proportionality no longer, no longer holds. The last process is what we have discussed in length in the previous slides, is the dissociative reactions. So by combining all these processes together, we can come to a surface coverage. And if we put the surface coverage, the yield, and electron beam distribution together into this general expression, we can get a deposition rate. So this is all about my presentation. Thank you.